In this video, we'll take a look at the newest Director Tools feature, the Sequence Editor. I'll show you how to use it to build and export a linear sequence based on multiple cameras within minutes. OK, let's get started. For this demonstration, I'll use two sample projects, a realistic rendering level and a matinee fighting scene demo. Both projects are free to download from the Epic Game Launcher. OK, let me start with this room. Let's say you finished your architectural visualization project and you want to export a single video, which will showcase it from various cameras. Let's call it a fly-through animation. I added several cameras with some simple panning animation to this level. Each has a different field of view and focal distance settings. If you don't know how to use cameras in Director Tools, go ahead and watch the camera animation tutorial first. OK, now let's open up the Sequence Editor. Go to Director Tools drop-down menu and choose Sequence Editor. The Sequence Editor is divided into three sections. A camera browser, which is a list of all camera actors placed in the level, grouped by DT controllers. A Sequence Editor timeline, which stores director and audio tracks. And a viewport with a final sequence output. Let's take a closer look at the Sequence Editor Timeline. It's similar to Director Tools Master Timeline. However, instead of adding property tracks to selected objects, you add director or audio tracks here. Every new sequence has a director track added by default. You can think of it as video layers that make your sequence. Generally, this timeline is where you will spend most of your time while creating a sequence. OK, let's start by choosing a first shot. In the camera browser, left-click on the camera's name to preview it. You can grab a slider on the right to see a different part of the camera animation. To import the camera into sequence, you can either drag and drop it onto the director track or use one of these buttons. The first one imports the selected camera to the topmost director track, according to the Sequence Editor Timeline slider. So for instance, if I had the slider at the third second and press the button, a new camera shot is added accordingly. The second button creates a new director track and adds the selected camera automatically. You may have already noticed that each camera added this way has the same shot length. That's because the sequence editor checks the DT controller's timeline duration and uses it as a default keyframe length. So if this value would be set to, let's say, 8 seconds, every new camera shot would have a default length of 8 seconds. You can cut it or extend it, of course, but I'll get back to this in a second. There is also a way to add a camera shot according to its first and last keyframe. It is a great time saver when you're working with a lot of cameras. Let me show you an example of that. Here I have a camera with two keyframes for both the location and rotation track. The camera starts moving at the third second and stops at the fifth second, so we get a two second shot. Now let's head back to the Sequence Editor and let's find our camera on the list. Enable the Use First Slash Last Keyframe option and click one of the Import buttons. As you can see, the camera has been added and it matches the time of the first and last keyframe. Let's now take a look at the camera shot itself. On the left, there is a camera name that this keyframe uses. Numbers on the right indicate the first, the last, and a total frame count of this particular camera shot. You can grab it and move it around. The same goes with edges of the keyframe. You can drag them to change the starting or ending point. To cut or split any selected keyframe, use the buttons above. Just move the current time indicator to the position you want to make a cut and press the button. 
As you can see, the sequence editor allows you to have multiple camera shots within a single director track. It's useful for grouping your shots together. For instance, you've got, let's say, several close-up shots, and instead of adding them into separate layers, you can use just one. Double-click on the director track and type in a name. That will make things a lot simpler. Another great feature of the sequence editor is a video frame preview. Toggle it by clicking on this arrow icon here. Now the director track is expanded and little thumbnails based on the first frame of your shots have been generated automatically. It's dynamic, so the thumbnail updates while I'm dragging the camera shot. To prevent any unwanted changes to camera shots, you can always lock your tracks. Click on the padlock icon to do so. Now you won't be able to move, cut or split the camera shots within this track. To remove any track, simply click on the X icon on the left. On the right side of the sequence editor timeline, you can find your active sequence. Just like the master timeline has controllers, the sequence editor supports multiple sequences within one level. Let me demonstrate a finished sequence, but before I hit play, let's add an audio track to it. Navigate to the bottom left hand corner and choose Add Track, Audio Track. Audio tracks have a different color and are placed below the director tracks. Right click on empty space and choose Add Key. Now we just need to load a sound from the content browser. Double click on the keyframe and choose, let's say, this one. If you can't hear any sounds, you probably have real-time audio volume set to minimum. To change that, go to Settings and grab the volume slider to the right. OK, let's play the final sequence. Alright, now let's jump to a more advanced project. Here's a well-known fighting scene by Epic Games. For this example, I've already added several cameras and created a simple animation in Director Tools. We are ready to start building a new sequence. Note that I removed the matinee actor and cleared the level blueprint. OK, let's choose some cameras and import them into the Sequence Editor timeline. Use the viewport on the right to specify a good moment to make a cut. I won't spend much time on trying to make a perfect action movie, as this tutorial is meant to just show you the basics of the sequence editor. I'm almost happy with the result. I would change that camera angle on the final shot. You can adjust or add new cameras to your scene at any time. Sequence creation is an iterative process, so you can jump back and forth between the sequence editor and other tools. Let's go ahead and add a new camera here, move the time indicator, add position and rotation tracks, and with auto key enabled, move the camera a little bit. Let me change the name so we can find it easier. OK, let's get back to the Sequence Editor. You can import a camera the same way we did before, or use a previous keyframe and update the view target in the properties. OK, once again, let me switch to the finished sequence. 
finally we're going to export it to a video or an image sequence. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial on how to use export in director tools, watch it first. Let's open export settings. I'm using work area as my time range. Input type has to be set to sequence and now choose the sequence you want to export. Once you're ready with the other settings, press export. And that's it. This is how you make linear sequences out of Unreal Engine using director tools. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.